Brother Kareem. Hey. It is so good to see you, brother. Good to see you. And, uh, you. you know, I was on a call with you uh, last Saturday. You invited me to, on a call for the uh, Righteous Minds program. Yes, sir. And uh, I want you to, to talk a little bit about uh, Righteous Minds sure. and uh, what that process is about. Sure. Uh, first of all, thank you so much for, for having me. Um, you know, I was, thank you for your support that you've always given, given to me and given to the program. Um, so Righteous Minds is a uh, educational and community development uh, firm that I started, um, organization that I started um, 10 years ago, uh, working, working with our young people. Uh, we started initially going into schools and setting up programs in schools, uh, recognizing that there's a need for a, what I call a pipeline program. Um, you know, unfortunately, now we're hearing a lot about the school to prison pipeline. Um, and so recognizing that if we don't create our own pipelines for our children from birth until success, whatever that is for them, um, that other people will. All right. So we got to create our own pipeline programs. So Righteous Minds represents one, one of those pipeline programs where we, we, we work as early to get our young people as early as five years old. Um, into the program and, and we stay connected with them all the way through college and or, or trade school or whatever they want to do um, to make sure that they're able to get to a level of success. Um, so that's the part and within that we do, it's intergenerational. So we, we recognize that there is a, a great need for the connection between our youth, our adults and our elders. Uh, so offering that, you know, we get that in church uh, but not everybody goes to church, right? So creating a space that maybe outside of church where, where, we can get, where we can get our young people to connect with adults and with elders who would like to help them in their pursuit of whatever, um, whatever ultimate goals that they have. So, so we started in schools. Uh, we've worked there and we still work there. So we partner with, with, with schools um, as well as now we partner with churches. So um, I know we, we had the pleasure of meeting through uh, our partnership with Brown Memorial Baptist Church. And so recognizing that churches, you know, in the black community, the, the institution that, that we own, we run, and we control. And so there's a need to get programs like ours connected to the church so that uh, we know, we're able to provide, one, um, to the, the academic component, but also the, the religious and spiritual component as well. Uh, we work a lot with young men, and so recognizing that a lot of our young men, as we see the numbers with, with, with many churches, even with adult men, um, that you know, we're not seeing that as much in some spaces. So if we can now help our young men to earlier to get this relationship with, with Christ um, and to become spiritual, that, you know, that too helps in our, our being able to help them holistically because it's not just righteous minds it's about being holistic not just academic uh, we want to be academic we, we need also recognize the need for community building for family building um, and so that that's what we work to to represent and to do and so th that component of it started with seeing my grand my grandfather my grandparents and my, and my mother uh, when we came to the states my mom um, you know, really brought that into the home and having conversations about, you know, how do we live Christ-like? You know, that it's not only about um, the knowing the, the Bible, but it, it's about the works. Right. You know, right. you know, faith without works is dead. And, you know, and that's one of her favorite, um, you know, scriptures. And so she made sure and, and always kind of instilled that in me that that's something that we have to work to do, um, and so yes, you know, you, you are uh, saved through Christ, and you know, by, by His grace. But you know, it also says in the Word that we have to put in the work. You know, and so she was always very much about that. Um, and then I would say, um, in high school and in college, that's when I began to say, okay, now I got to do the work. You know, I knew I knew the work because I was told about the work. But now it's like, how do I begin to do the work right. to be able to live and show and, and prove, as, as people would say in our community? So I started, um, I went to boarding school, and um, I had that great opportunity, went away to boarding school. Um, and while I was there, I learned something that really changed my life. I learned that 
you know, unfortunately, the people that need the most help tend to get the least. Yeah. yeah. And the people that need the least help tend to get the most. And I was baffled by that. I couldn't, under, I couldn't wrap my, my teenage head around that, that how, you know, coming from where I come from, a community that I come from, and the need that I saw in my community, how was it that, and, and also what I saw on television, that when our people were saying that we needed help, that we were being um, sometimes looked at and, and negative things were being said about us, and this narrative was being created about, about our community. And so we're saying that we needed help and we get bashed for it, but then the people who were able to help us, um, when they asked for help, they got it. And I was just like, what in the world? So, you know, God really put it in me that, listen, you know, whatever you end up doing in life, um, you know, I'm going to help you to be able to help those people that need help, you know, and those people are you, you know, it's not separate from, from Kareem, that is Kareem, you know, growing up, um, single, single mom and, you know, coming to the States and living that life, immigrant life as well. Um, so, you know, that was, that, that was me. So when I see it and I go back to work that we do at Righteous Minds, going back into the communities, working with the young people, that's me, you know? So that's when I really got like, okay, I got to, cause I see myself in every young man, every young woman that I work with, um, I, see, I see myself in them. Yeah, yeah. Now, you know, one of the things that uh, totally amazes me by you is that you are able to come to the crossroads of faith and deep understanding of black history or African history. Yes, sir. And I want to, where did, where did that consciousness come from? Because that's a serious crossroads to yes, be sir. at. And I want you to explain a little bit about how you came to that process. Right. Uh, another wonderful question. Um, for me, that, that happened when um, another part of my academic uh, career, I went to Morehouse. I went to Morehouse College. I was blessed with that opportunity as well. And that Morehouse, um, that was the next piece of the process. You know, I was amazed that I had black teachers. And I'll tell this embarrassing story. Um, I didn't know that there were different types of doctors. Right, so when I thought only doctor I knew was like it was a it was a doctor that you went to the hospital. Yeah, medical doctor. Yeah, it's a medical doctor. Yeah. I, didn't, I didn't know that there was such a thing as having a PhD. Right, and they, they, that was called a doctor too. So I went, I'm going to class. I'm like, you know, again, I went to this prestigious boarding school, and I'm like, okay, and I, I think I'm smart, or people are telling me that I'm smart, and I walk in there, and, and I'm having this conversation, and it's doctor this person in the biology department, doctor this person in the chemistry department, doctor you know person in, in the English and doctor this person in arts and I'm like oh my god like what like, why would they all these doctors y'all don't work in hospitals incredible and and it, it, that opened my mind to like wait a second you know um, being there and seeing that our people were at those heights you know also being there and seeing that I was being told that I was educated but there was so much stuff that I didn't know and and then the third part was learning my history as you just asked the question about so being there, and in every class, and this is one of the, the things that I love about my Morehouse experience, and a lot of people say just about HBCUs, is that you see yourself in every class. Right. In every class. So biology, you learn about black people that did great things in biology, chemistry, physics. And unfortunately, you know, and I went to public schools in, in New York City when I came up um, for elementary and middle school. Right. Um, and I had great teachers there and, and did well, but I, we don't see ourselves. The curriculum, and you know, people may not like to hear this, but it's a white supremacist curriculum. Yeah, you know, yeah. Our people are taken out of the curriculum. And so for me, once I, once I received that, Brother Kevin, I was like, wow, how many students don't get to go to Morehouse? How many of our children don't get to go to Spelman? or don't get to go to Howard, and don't get, to, how, many, how many of my children don't even get to go to college? Go to, go to college, exactly. Right, and don't get to, so, if, if I'm learning this in all the way, after all these years of school, this is when I'm first learning this, how about we let our children learn this stuff early? And so a big part of it was, that's what we're gonna do. Yeah. We're gonna make sure that five-year-old, you start with us at, at five, you're gonna know your history. <laughs> and, and, and not just the, uh, you know, that we started here and, and, and as slaves in 1619. Right. Right? Like, not just that story. That's a part of the story, 
But that's such a small part a of the story. A small part of the story. We were here, our people were here for tens of thousands of years. The greatest civilizations that people are still mystified by, they're trying to figure out how they built the pyramids. 2021, they still are not completely sure how our people were able to build pyramids on sand, right, in the desert. And they're still there. They're still in perfect alignment with, with, the, with the constellations. Amazing, right? So I was like, I children need to know, learn that history and need to know it. Because what it really does, it, it awakens that part of you that's inside there to know that you're connected to your ancestors. Yeah. You know, we're yeah. connected. And it's not this separation, um, you know, that, oh, I'm here and all that came before me was slaves. Or all that came before me was just struggle. You know, so the struggle is a part of our story, but it's not our entire story. Right. So learning that and, and learning that at Morehouse and saying, man, I got to share this. I can't keep it to myself. As every young person that I see, I got to make sure that they know that. And so, you know, God blessed me to, to be able to start a program. I said, we're going to have whatever we do, we're going to have a program called The Awakening. So our, our hallmark program that we've had from day one was something called The Awakening. Right. And so that is a black history uh, course that everybody that's a part of Righteous Minds gets. Um, and we start, you know, in, in our earliest civilizations and then work our way up, um, going through our, our movements, going through all, all of the great things that our people have done and telling that part of our story. Now, do you subscribe to the notion that when we know our history at that length, when we take a deeper dive into our history at, at that length, do you subscribe to the notion that it makes our faith a lot stronger? Oh, yes. Oh, so to bring it to that piece, oh, most definitely. I think what, what it does is it also rec makes us realize that even within our faith communities and our faith spaces, that even the story was kept away from us in those communities as well. Right. Right. So it, it pushes me and it pushes it pushes others to recognize that, you know, those people in the Bible looked like us. Right. Jesus looked like me, you know, um, other religious, you know, depending on people who are other religious beliefs, you know, some of those people look like our people as well. And so, you know, it really gets us to the point as, you know, someone who grew up as, and is a Christian um, that, whoa, wow, you know, I'm reading about my people in this book. Um, and yeah, it makes you that much more connected, um, you know, th than you can ever see or know. And that, that's been my experience. You know, the young people that I work with um, are, you know, th th their stories are amazing. Right, they come from varied backgrounds, uh, but I do see in all of them a magnificent growth because of this awakening process. Even in trying to understand and take time to whatever their faith belief is, you know, they get deeper connected to it. You know, their spiritual growth is on a whole nother level. And I do think, yes, as as your question, you know. Um, points to is that now having that deeper understanding of self, you look for yourself in everything. And so, and one of those big things being faith and, and being, you know, spirituality as well. So finally, uh, I want to talk about the, uh, the technological side of uh, Dr. Kareem Roberts. Okay. Tell me about uh, your experience, uh, for instance, with STEM programs and uh, bringing kids uh, to uh, the high tech side of the digital divide. And tell me about your experience in working with uh, young people in that respect. Right. Um, my experience was, was recognizing um, that there is STEM, and now as they add in the, the A for STEAM, you know, with the arts component, that all of these things are connected and intricately connected. And then also as, you know, learning the, the black history, that, that we are connected to all of these things again. So realizing that, you know, as they push and, and our society gets more into technology and, and now artificial intelligence and virtual, virtual reality and, auto, you know, um, and augmented reality that our people are there as well. Exactly. And we've been there from the beginning. You know, we played uh, chief roles in all of these technologies. 
And, you know, so recognize it, one, again, it, it just goes back to the, the need and constant need for us to know our history, constant need for us to speak about it, and then constant need for us to do the work. So on the STEM side, it's saying, yes, we've been in those spaces. So when you hear all of these numbers about the, the smaller percentages of, of us that are in these spaces, it's not because of a lack of know-how, a, a lack of ingenuity, or a lack of desire. It's because of systemic issues that are here in this country and worldwide, you know, primarily racism and white supremacy, that are keeping us out of those spaces. However, we can still work and we can still continue to build our skills. So the push always becomes to make sure our children are at the cutting edge of knowing how to code, of knowing robotics, of knowing that, you know, it, it, even if you decide that you want to go into finance, right, that there is a need for finance in, in STEM-related te technology, yeah. right? E even if you're, you're, you're history and that's your thing, you can be the historical and tell that historical story as it relates to us in these particular areas. So I, I always think of, of STEM and STEAM in two ways. One being the technology part and, and the, the math and the science component. So yes, the coding, and not just the play, because I, I, you know, this gets me upset sometimes, if, if, I be, if I'll be real honest with you. Sometimes we hear about STEM programs in our community, and it's not real STEM, right? In regards to the children are not really learning how to code. Right? Yeah. And, and, yeah. And, and it's um, you know. And how and, important and, is that? Oh, it, it's extremely important, you know, because recognizing the thing that keeps us out of those spaces is that when, for example, if a, a young black boy, a young white boy, and a young uh, Asian boy, right, Asian, you know, whether it be Chinese or whether it be Indian, right, from, from, from the, the continent, and they come into these spaces, we, have to, we do have to recognize, of course, there's racism and white supremacy, so that is part of it. But the other part of it is the actual know-how. Right. So if I, if these two these two groups are actually learning, actually how to code, like real coding, and from scratch, and you make the mistakes, and you're allowed to be in the space, you know, Brother Brown, who's, who's a part of and one of the, the co-founders of Righteous Minds, Righteous Minds Group, he told, he, he he coins it the, the thinker and maker space. Mm. Right. So we have to create and allow that thinker and maker space to happen. And we see stories in Africa, right? You know, young people will go and get scraps. You know, there's this great story about the young man. He went and got scraps. The village needed water. He literally went to a scrapyard in a junkyard and built technology right. from the scrapyard and was able to make it where they were able to connect that to water to get water, right? But you have to be allowed to have that space and, and to try and to fail. And because that, that's how discoveries come about. Right. Yeah. You know, the, the need and then having the space to try and fail and then try and fail until you have innovation. So, you know, recognizing that we then need authentic spaces where, you, where you're able to do that. So if I'm not allowing you or creating a space that does that, but I got you thinking that you're in a space that does that, that, that then when it comes time to, 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 to go, it's like somebody so you think you're playing basketball, right? Right, and and so you think that it's my turn. You're playing basketball, right? But the whole time you've actually been playing soccer, right? Right. You know, or, right. or they say, or they say football, right? right. So, so I'm from the Caribbean. It's like we're, we're playing with our foot. I come to America. They're throwing the ball around. Exactly. You know, exactly. So, so that we're not. So when we come here, we're expected to be on in the same place playing the same sport, in this case it being STEM, right. we're playing two different games. Wow, wow. You know, and somebody convinced us that we were playing the same game. Yeah. And we were being taught the same game and practicing the same game, but in fact, we were not. So how do we get past the gatekeepers that uh, create this confusion? How do we move our kids forward from uh, that confusion? Right, that's a brilliant question. Um, how do we do that? Is that we have to do that ourselves. Yeah. You know, we have enough doctors, we have enough, you know, lawyers, we have enough, in, in the STEM fields, you know, we, we have enough of the coders, we have enough of, you know, the people that, the, the founders of, of programs um, and of apps, right? We have enough of those. 
The issue is, if I, I would say that we use our spaces that we already own and control. And so seeing the church as, as one of those places that we, we begin to set up um, locations where we become our own incubators for our talent. We, we, we begin to have it, we begin to teach them the real game that's being played out here and not being told that we're playing the game and we're not really playing the game. Right. Um, you know, and that being, you know, what actually needs to be taught, how to code, you know, there's certain types of code that, that are very much needed. Um, there's technologies, emerging technologies uh, that, that we are at, at the, the front and center of. And, and also that whatever you, you have something in here, right, that you may have been given to bring back that spiritual piece that God may have given you that you need to birth for the world. Exactly. Right? Exactly. So we got to create the space. And if we are from a, a spiritual and a religious place that believes in the supernatural, right? We believe that that's possible, right? The God that we believe in is, able, is capable of doing those things. Exactly. So our children having these big dreams or these big ideas, we should definitely not be the ones telling them, no, you can't do that, right? <laughs> we talk about believing in the God who could do things that are like mind boggling. So recognizing that, you know, we, we have it already. We have the spaces. We just got to take the time and we got to build it out. And, and recognize that it's okay. Because I often say, you know, God has really put this on my spirit recently, that power has become a bad word for some people. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. And, and so that whole concept, and I understand why with, with the whole with white power and the way white power has been used as a force of destruction, right, throughout the world. So I, I understand that component. But just as we saw the black power movement, Right? That black power movement was not about destruction. It was about building. Right? It was about how do we build up our people, how do we build up our communities. Yes. And and we saw that. That's what you know the Black Panthers were, were building. You know, so people who were behind that, we see SNCC, they were about building. Um, so recognizing that, you know, power is okay. And us having our own power and us having spaces where, where we you know, own and control again and are able to say what's best for us. Right. You know, right. and again, that's not a negative thing. Saying that I'm a black man and I love black people and I want to see black people do well. I'm sorry if somebody's offended by that. I'm sorry, but I'm not sorry. Exactly. Right? Exactly. Like, if, if you're going to tell me me loving myself and, and loving people that look like me or, or loving and wanting to see, you know, my family, my community thrive, then, you know, that's kind of problematic. You yeah. Know? So yeah. making sure that, and but, but we have to put that in our space, in our in, 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 in our mental space especially, uh, because as Bob Marley so eloquently said, right, emancipate yourself from mental slavery. None but ourselves can free our mind. Yeah. So you know we we have to recognize that that, you know, the fact that we are thinking twice about building our own. The fact that we're thinking twice about, you know, us having power and, and being able to, to have some kind of independence that we're like, oh, my God. And, and, and we, we have to go through this, this duality, yeah. right? As the yeah. boys talked about double consciousness right. and France Fanon talked right. about, you know, we can go on all of our scholars that named that. Exactly. Right. Uh, but we can't in 2021. We can't continue to do that. Exactly. You know, um, and so that that's the thing for me that. We have the spaces, right? We, we have to get the mindset because that's what, that's what we're lacking, right, is that mindset. And then once we have that and the determination that that, that, that mindset is okay to do that, why? Because here's the thing at, at the bottom line about righteous minds and, and, and the work that I do and, and where I stand on things, right? I see our children as our most valuable resource. Absolutely. I'll say it again. I see our children as our most valuable resource. Period. Right? So if, if I and we are not willing to take the time to protect, defend, and appreciate our most valuable resource, then we have a major problem. Right? And I think God has a problem with us if that's the case. Absolutely. Right? Because he Absolutely. sent us those resources to, to love and care and appreciate. You know, so us being real clear that we can do it, we will do it, and we must do it. 
Um, and, and we have what it takes. We get the mindset, we get to work, and God is on our side. And, and this will happen. On that note, uh, Brother Kareem, in the spirit of, uh, of church family, in the spirit of fellowship, in the spirit of uh, us being fellow members of Brown Memorial Baptist Church, <laughs> I just want to say, uh, Brother Kareem, it's an honor and pleasure to know you, to work with you, and, uh, and if people want to have an opportunity to reach out to you, how can they? All right, thank you. So there's several ways if you want to um, get involved with Righteous Minds and the work that we do. Um, primarily, we have our website, which is www.righteousminds.org, www.righteousminds.org, O-R-G. Um, you, can, you can also uh, reach us on if you're on social media, so uh, Righteous Minds on all of the social media platforms, um, Righteous Minds, uh, and on Instagram is A Righteous Mind. All right, so on Righteous Minds for Facebook, Righteous Minds for Twitter, uh, and for Instagram is A Righteous Mind. Uh, so you can reach out to us in any one of those ways, and we'll be glad to, you know, to, to have you come on board for your children. Um, our, our Hallmark program, again, is our Saturday Academy. We have that every Saturday. Uh, right now, with, with the, it's housed at, headquartered at Brown Memorial Baptist Church, uh, where we have a computer lab, and we've just been blessed with a brand new computer lab. So once things get, get back going, we'll be able to, uh, to take advantage of that, uh, and it's for the whole community. Um, but that's the Hallmark, the Hallmark program, is our Saturday Academy. And uh, then we have tutoring during the week. So if you need to reach out for us to tutor for tutoring, you can reach out for us for that as well. Um, as well as adults who need any help with the GED tests, uh, adults that need any help with uh, looking for, for work, uh, please feel free to reach out to us um, and we'll be of assistance. Brother Kareem, thank you so very much for your time. Like I said, it's an honor and pleasure knowing you. And I really look forward to uh, working with you in the future as well. Thank you, my brother. God bless.